now i invite uh, dr vijay lakshmi chelikani dermatologist and a cosmetologist she did her mbbs md dermatology from usmania medical college hyderabad and dnb in dermatology and also did fellowship in aesthetic dermatology in dr mgr university of tamil nadu under dr maya vedamurthy so now uh, today her topic is skin as an endocrine organ over to you jalakshmi thank you for the kind introduction ma'am good uh, good morning to everyone um, so i'll try to keep it short at the outset i'd also like to thank idea clinics for giving me this opportunity so i'm going to talk on skin as an endocrine uh, organ so we all know that skin is the largest organ but it is also the most vital endocrine organ research shows that the skin has equivalence of hpa axis and the hpt axis uh the appendages of the skin produce uh, various hormones like vitamin d sex steroids and retinoids so the skin acts both as a target and source of hormones for example the scalp the scalp hair follicles act as mini organs uh, which are target and source of some neurotransmitters peptides and hormones which play important role in the hair cycle so the skin is made up of various cells like the keratinocytes fibroblasts adipocytes and uh, uh, sebocytes so these cells make up the epidermis dermis and the hypodermis they act as a target and source of hormones so they have intracellular and intranuclear receptors to which the hormones bind and uh, express the biological activity so these endocrinological disorders ha have characteristic uh, cutaneous dermatosis which help in early detection of the underlying endocrine disease so hormones are critical regulators of several physiological proce processes in the human body and play an important role in each system the deficiency or excess as seen in endocrine disorders can result in numerous dermatological manifestations the dermatological manifestations seen in these disorders can range from mild to severe forms and may or may not be specific some of these can occur early in onset and help in early diagnosis and treatment of the underlying disorder so it is crucial to identify these endocrine disorder uh, endocrine uh, disor underlying endocrine disorders to provide the corrective treatment for skin symptoms rather than providing symptomatic treatment so this is a table that summarizes the various receptors that are present on the skin and the hormones that bind to them uh, causing the effects so for example the corticotropin releasing hormone receptors which are present on the keratinocytes they coordinate the stress response and initiate the hpa axis equivalent in the skin so this could provide a potential therapeutic uh, uh, agents uh, in treating psoriasis and atopic dermatitis the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor stimulates biological activity of keratinocytes and the cutaneous manifestations are seen when these auto antibodies bind to these receptors so parathyroid hormone or parathyroid hormone related peptide receptors uh, they regulate fibroblasts for keratinocytes and angiogenesis they also have a role in hair growth which is why they could be explored in the field of uh, treatment of chemotherapy induced alopecia so the melanocortin receptors again uh, regulate the skin pigmentation and uh, uh, have immunomodulatory effects so the alpha msh and the acth usually binds to these receptors and then we see a uh, increase in uh, anti inflammatory cytokines decreasing the pro inflammatory cytokines and also has a protective role over the hair follicle prolonging the anagen phase of the hair so pro uh, prolactin receptors uh, these prolactin is uh, responsible for possible sebum production keratinocyte proliferation and thermoregulation so the increased levels of prolactin are seen in diseases like uh, psoriasis besets disease and other autoimmune conditions so the role of bromocriptin uh, comes here which uh, might prove a good therapeutic role in these diseases uh, also cutaneous manifestations in hyperprolactinemia are seborrhea acne hirsutism and androgenetic alopecia the acronym for which is saha so vasoactive intestinal polypeptide receptors uh, release histamine and cause vasodilation the upregulation of these uh, receptors uh, might incite cytokines causing inflammation in psoriasis and atopic dermatitis so insulin like growth factor uh, epidermal growth factors and growth hormone receptors they maintain homeostasis by cell proliferation and differentiation so insulin like growth factors uh, cause increased uh, inflammatory biomarkers and increase the sebum production by sebocytes which cause acne 
coming to intranuclear receptors we have these glucocorticoid receptors and androgen receptors we all know they have multiple roles in keratinocyte differentiation aging hair follicle growth and thyroid hormone receptors regulate the keratinocyte and hair follicle proliferation and differentiation estrogen receptors estrogen acts as an anti inflammatory and anti apoptotic role in the skin uh, retinoid receptors well these maintain the skin homeostasis uh, they maintain the balance between keratinocyte proliferation and descommation which is why they are used as uh, therapeutic agents in hyperkeratotic disorders like uh, psoriasis uh, keratotic genodermatosis and uh, severe acne and also some in in some uh, cancers so vitamin d receptors help in uh, vitamin d helps in regulating the epidermal proliferation and differentiation so this slide here shows the different hormones that are produced by the skin which include the parathyroid hormone related peptides insulin uh, like growth factor uh, corticotropin releasing hormone urocortin propiomelanocortin peptides gonadocorticoids like testosterone dihydrotestosterone glucocorticoids and catecholamines so steroids uh, these are produced uh, in the skin along with sex steroids from either systemically derived precursors or through local conversion so corticosterone and cortisol are not only produced by the keratinocytes but also the epidermal melanocytes and dermal fibroblasts so we all know that uh, steroids have different uh, roles to play uh, they help in keratinocyte differentiation they inhibit the keratinocyte proliferation they have anti inflammatory anti proliferative actions along with immunosuppressive actions which is why they have used in tre treatment modality in formulations of topical intralesional and systemic in various diseases so the pilosebaceous unit can synthesize the sex steroids and convert weaker androgens to more potent forms like the dhes are uh, converted to testosterone to dihydrotestosterone which is five times more potent than testosterone these androgens stimulate the sebocytes uh, and also they are present on the dermal papillae which uh, express different effects in different parts of the body for example the androgens on the uh, increase in androgens uh, stimulates the body hair growth while the ha uh, the hair on the scalp produces and the eyebrows have no effect to androgens so the estrogen increases the skin thickness uh, collagen content in different sites vitamin d it is produced and converted to active forms in the skin it regulates epidermal proliferation and differentiation uh, it is also responsible for normal hair growth and acts as a tumor suppressor so the deficiency correction helps to improve conditions like psoriasis atopic dermatitis and hair loss uh, it's been used topically in uh, vitiligo though mechanism of action is not uh, well elucidated the skin and thyroid as spoken by the previous speakers uh, the incidence and prevalence of thyroid disease is on the high uh, about 42 million indian population is affected with thyroid disease out of which about 80 to 90% have cutaneous manifestations so these manifestations develop after the thyroid disease or could also be the first presenting sign and precede the diagnosis by many years so the thyroid skin connection is a hot frontier in dermato endocrinology the skin changes the typical changes that we see in hypothyroidism are xerosis dry and coarse skin which is due to the vasoconstriction uh, the hair is dry dry brittle hair metamorphosis brittle nails telogen effluvium decreased sweating Uh, poor wound healing and you know, sometimes uh, candidal folliculitis the typical characteristic cutaneous sign in seen in hypothyroidism is uh, the mixed edema most recent data suggests that topical thyroid hormone may accelerate wound healing rate so do these changes occur in subclinical hypothyroidism yes they do occur in subclinical hypothyroidism though they might not be as severe and more in number as in the hypothyroidism but the, and when compared to youth thyroid patients these cutaneous manifestations are seen even in subclinical hypothyroid patients so what happens to all these changes when uh, how do you treat these changes so if the hypothyroidism is cor corrected these underlying changes are also corrected hypothyroidism uh, the skin is warm soft moist and smooth and there's a persistent flush of the face palmar erythema hyperhidrosis hypertrichosis hyperpigmentation pretibial mixed edema acropaki and pruritus so the thyroid dermopathy is uh, classically seen in five types which include pretibial uh, plaques pretibial uh, edema nodules in and around the foot and ankle uh, dermopathy in the scars and elephantiasis so if we treat the hyperthyroidism these changes to an extent reverse but most of these changes remain as it is because the changes have already occurred in the dermis with deposition of mucopolysaccharides 
so thyroid autoimmunity and skin disease so most uh, uh, skin conditions are associated with thyroid autoimmune disease or vice versa like we can see vitiligo alopecia areata chronic urticaria bullous disorders and connective tissue disorders so vitiligo and alopecia areata precede the thyroid disease so elevated thyroid antibodies serve as a useful clinical tool in youth thyroid patients with vitiligo and alopecia to identify patients at increased risk of thyroid disease Recent studies demonstrated the expression of thyroid factor 1, thyroglobulin and thyroperoxidase in human skin. Acne. So 85% of the patients that come to our OPD uh, in the age group of adults and adolescents uh, have acne and most of it is hormonal acne. So what happens in hormonal acne? So the, there is an increased number and increased sensitivity of these androgen receptors on the sebaceous gland. There is increased peripheral conversion of hormones to the more potent dihydrotestosterone the worsening of disease in premenstrual period in 60 to 70% of the women uh, production of sebum can also be stimulated in periods of stress by neuropeptides and hormones such as melanocortins and corticotropin releasing hormone neuropeptides histamine retinoids vitamin d and insulin like growth factor have been described as regulators of sebum production so do men get hormonal acne Yes men do get acne because they do have testosterone and uh, unlike uh, women who have fluctuations in the hormones men also have fluctuations in the levels of testosterone depending on the activities like stress exercise etc so that leads to formation of acne uh, so the basic pathology here is the sebaceous gland gets stimulated by the other the hormones and uh, neurotransmitters there is increased secretion of sebum under the influence of androgens which blocks the follicular infundibulum later on uh, acted upon by cutibacterium acnes leading to the pathognomonic clinical features of acne so how do we investigate hormonal acne we do these uh, investigations like testosterone uh, dhas sex hormone binding globulin prolactin lh fsh fasting and postprandial insulin levels treatment acne presenting with cyst nodule sudden onset widely dispersed lesions is often indicative of excess androgens So this adult female acne is sudden in onset exasperated with uh, uh, acute uh, stressors and triggers this acne should be treated with hormonal therapies so hormonal therapies are reserved not only for patients with biochemical markers of hyperandrogenism but also for severe resistant cases uh, as well as patients who do not uh, have uh, higher levels of androgenism but who have an unpredictable course and high frequency of acne bouts without hyperandrogenemia so th the treatment includes androgen receptor blockers oral contraceptives glucocorticoids and enzyme inhibitors of these the recently uh, fda approved drug is uh, clascoterone 1% clascoterone is an androgen receptor inhibitor it's been approved in the year 2020 though it's not still uh, available here studies show that it has a very good response and also it is a, a topical medication uh, which is uh, better and more uh, compliant with the patients skin and diabetes uh, well 77 million indian population above the age of 18 are suffering from diabetes and nearly 25 million are pre diabetic and 50% of them are not aware of the diabetic condition of these 30 to 70 patients have skin changes and we all know how the skin changes occur while most of them are explained by the underlying hormonal uh, changes but some of them are non specific so the hyperglycemia leads to the formation of non enzymatic glycation of proteins resulting in advanced glycation end products and decreased enzymatic digestion of collagen which leads to thickening of the skin called the diabetic thick skin hyperinsulinemia signaling through insulin like growth factor 1 receptors on the fibroblasts and keratinocytes binding of the insulin like growth factors with the receptors causes cutaneous changes with epidermal proliferation causing acanthosis nigricans so these are the various cutaneous manifestations that we see in diabetic patients the changes that accompany the acute gross metabolic disturbances are infections and xanthomatosis the chronic degenerative changes include erysipelas like erythema diabetic rubiosus diabetic dermopathy neuropathy bullous diabetic rum scleroderma the frequently seen changes which are uh, neither explained by the metabolic state disturbances or the chronic degenerative changes are necrobiosis lipodica diabeticorum acanthosis nigricans granuloma annulare pruritus diabetic thick skin and skin tags the complications to therapy include insulin injections and oral hypoglycemic drugs 
with insulin injections previously lipotrophy and lipohypertrophy was observed but with na- na- the newer insulins now we hardly see these side effects uh, this picture shows uh, eruptive xanthomas malignant otitis externa and candidal intertrigo uh, hammer toes because of uh, diabetic neuropathy erysipelas like erythema uh, also diabetic ulcers gangrene necrotizing fasciitis and folliculitis so the first picture here is uh, that of necrobiosis lipidica dermopathy skin tags acanthosis nigricans and bulla diabeticorum skin and stress so stress brings about a lot of changes on the skin uh, the hormones that are usually increased in periods of stress are glucocorticoids catecholamines growth hormones and prolactin so the levels of cortisol are almost 9 times higher during periods of stress Uh, psoriasis stress is both the consequence of living with psoriasis and also cause for psoriasis exacerbation so uh, in periods of stress when the cort- corticotropin releasing hormone is released it uh, results in lipogenesis and does increase in cytokines which causes acne the cortisol brings about further damage in the barrier uh, function of the skin which exacerbates atopic dermatitis wound healing is also delayed in periods of stress catecholamines cortisol and cause dna damage which leads to premature skin aging so pcos we all know about pcos uh, androgen excess insulin resistance hyperinsulinemia uh, clinical features are acne vulgaris uh, female pattern hair loss seborrhea hirsutism and acanthosis we advise weight loss and dietary modifications hirsutism and anti acne uh, uh, medications uh, anti acne medications can be used so treatment uh, includes uh, minoxidil and spironolactone so what is male pcos if i tell somebody you have uh, P- if i tell a male patient that you have pcos i'm sure he's going to sue me so there is a male equivalent of pcos which is characterized by early onset of androgenetic alopecia that is less than 35 years increased levels of um, lh prolactin dhas and low levels of sex hormone blinding globulin these patients are at increased risk of metabolic syndrome hyperinsulinemia and ca- carotid at- uh, atherosclerosis so melasma uh, again this is another hormonal uh, uh, condition where uh, hormones play a role though exact mechanism is not known because even nulliparis and pregnant both have melasma so it is explained by the fact that there are increased estrogen receptors uh, autoimmune progesterone dermatitis this is a rare cyclical mucocutaneous hypersensitivity reaction to peak levels of exogenous progest- endogenous progesterone in the luteal phase of menstrual cycle in women who have been exposed to exogenous progestins symptoms usually start 3 to 10 days before menstruation and resolve 1 to 2 days thereafter so you can see re- reactions like urticaria eczema multiforme and uh, uh, other non specific reactions so these usually affect the body and the treatment includes oral contraceptives uh, progesterone desensitization etc AGA this is uh, something that bothers everybody both males and females and hormones and genetics play a very important role in this so the androgens like i said have different effects in different parts of the body and increased levels of androgens help in growth of body hair which we don't want we want hair on the scalp which does not happen so uh, this is due to increased androgens and increased dihydrotestosterone both type 1 and 2 binding of these androgen to the receptors results in miniaturization of the hair they are again treated with various modalities like minoxidil finasteride dutasteride and prp so coming to the summary or take home message i think everything is hormonal everything has a hormonal basis and the skin hormone connection is very complex at least to me it's been very complex the skin acts as a mirror that reflects the internal hormonal milieu most endocrine diseases have cutaneous manifestations which is why we need to know the underlying uh, uh, endocrine disorder to uh, uh, we, we should know the characteristic clinical manifestations to uh, diagnose the underlying endocrine disorders so the field of dermato endocrinology is very vast huge and complex maybe we'll need more fellowships and observerships in this field to improve our knowledge in both the fields Uh, there is limited literature on skin as an endocrine organ but the scope for future research diagnostic and therapeutic implications is huge thank you so any questions from audience
it is a very dry topic but very well very well uh, presented by dr vijay lakshmi she is now uh, assistant professor in mallareddy college and also consultant dermatologist in uh, idea clinics so I, i think if audience have no question one question for you what are the advanced treatments available in idea clinics in the dermatology aspect the endocrine related in uh, general dermatology mom we have biologics which are uh, like the most uh, effective and most uh, useful agents that we have to treat chronic diseases like psoriasis and uh, dermatitis chronic dermatitis conditions yeah along with that we also have other advanced treatments for uh, cosmetic uh, conditions like hormonal acne and Thank you. Just one more question, yeah. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. Did you have any experience of like treating vitilago with, with vitamin D topical patients? Mm, I don't have any personal experience, ma'am. But uh, reports say that they're u- uh, useful in treating uh, vitamin D. But the exact mechanism as to how it acts in repigmenting is not uh, clearly elucidated. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just using a sorolin therapy through that uh, that can promote the vitamin D. and vitamin d supplementations also can help in that